Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Science of Reading is for Everyone panel webinar featuring our 2021 Science of Reading Star Award winners. My name is Victoria. I'm a marketing manager at Amplify. Today's webinar will be recorded, and we're going to email out that recording link tomorrow for you to rewatch as you'd like, and you're also welcome to share that with your colleagues. You will also be, re be receiving a certificate of attendance in that email, so keep a lookout for that. We have a live captioner with us, so if you want to access captions, just click on the live transcript button in the bottom tray. And throughout the webinar, if you have any questions for our panelists, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A and we'll try to get to them at the end. We welcome comments in the chat and to start, let's find out where everyone is joining us from today and what your role in education is. And while you're doing that, I'd like to introduce Karen Venditti and Megan Mulbert, who are literacy curriculum specialists from Amplify, and they're here to moderate today's session. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. I see people still coming into the, the session. Yeah, thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Victoria. We are so excited to be here. Happy Tuesday to everyone. It's midday. Um, I'm in Eastern Standard Time and it's midday for me. So as uh, Victoria mentioned, we'd love to see where you are joining us from. So if you want to go ahead and put that in the chat, um, we'd love to see. This is always so fun for us, right, Karen? We have people from all over. People from all over joining and we have such an amazing group of educators on this call today that you're going to hear from. And so this is just super exciting. So yeah, please keep letting us know where you're joining from. We love, it's still cold here uh, in Indiana. So I love to hear when people are coming from places like Georgia and Florida and even further yeah. in places like Australia I, I, or Hawaii. I think I did just see Hawaii. Like, can everyone just envision this lovely warm weather, hopefully that, that you're experiencing in Hawaii today? Um, but as we do get started, um, we are so thrilled to introduce our Science of Reading Award winners. Uh, maybe some of you have listened to their podcasts and you're really excited to put a face to the name and really get some insight and an opportunity to ask them the true experts of, of really how to, uh, you know, learn about the science of reading and bring that learning into your district. Uh, we want to give you that opportunity, but as we mentioned, we'll go ahead and, and introduce ourselves as you're introducing um, who you are. So my name is Megan Mobear. I'm a former elementary uh, teacher from the great state of Louisiana. The majority of my time was spent during those K to two years, those critical years for developing um, uh, readers. And so um, it was through my experience with Amplify, actually, that I began to learn about the science of reading as I was actually putting the science of reading into action. Um, without even really knowing that it was a thing at the time. Um, so we've come a long way since then. Uh, and that's what led me to meeting Karen. Um, and now we get to work together. Um, and so it's, it's such a joy to be here. And I am Karen Venditti, as Megan shared. And I was a former educator in uh, first grade, middle school language arts. But my work uh, now in, with uh, Amplify works with teachers and districts implementing high quality um, instructional materials. And so I get to see this in action and I get to see the science of reading play out every day in classrooms. And, and as we talk to folks that like the, the uh, ladies on the call today and those of you joining us, you know, we're going to hear about that and we're really excited to share that with you today. And so welcome. Yeah, and so without further ado, we're going to introduce these lovely uh, science of reading uh, winners to you all. And Karen, I'll let you go ahead and get started with our science of reading superstar. All right, so our superstar, Anila, from California. She this, and so in case you um, aren't aware of exactly what that award was, you know, this award celebrates a teacher who has made really kind of that direct impact on kiddos and really served as a role model for all of colleagues by applying that science of reading. So, you know, putting it into action. And the dedication to students is, and the success of students is really unparalleled and really an inspiration to everyone. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so Ania, Anila was our winner for that Science of Reading Superstar Teacher Award and so deserved. But Karen, we forgot to mention there were over 300 nominations for these awards. And I know that um, our, you know, the way that winners were determined, so it, the, the competition was, was very, very stiff. And so uh, the next uh, uh, award winner that I'm so excited and honored to introduce is our Science of Reading uh, standout school, which was awarded to a principal. And the qualifications that um, were had to be met to even nominate someone for this award is that this, you know, principal had to supervise the successful shift to the science of reading. And if you're a leader on the call, whether you're a school leader or a district leader, you know that that is no easy task. Um, but this principal did it uh, with such grace. In fact, she actually saw this shift of the science of reading or helped make help her educators make the shift to the science of reading in many classrooms um, across her district. And so obviously her school has faced challenges and she has remarkable gains to show for it. And even in our conversations with her and listening to her on our science of reading podcast with Susan just brings great experience through her experience. So Kathy Dorbish is our principal and she is joining us from Austintown Elementary uh, in Ohio. All right, and our last but not least, our co-award winners for Amplifying Your District, um, Allie Rice from Kansas Public Schools in Kansas City, Kansas, joining us from Lawrence, Kansas today. Actually, I have to admit, Allie and I had a conversation yesterday. I was born in Lawrence, Kansas, so that's a nice little twist to that. Um, but the, and, and Brittany Bills, the curriculum coordinator from Grand Island, uh, Nebraska, and I have been to Grand Island in person to get to see their schools and their teachers in action, which has been wonderful. So these two leaders really, when you think about this award, um, these two leaders have driven such change in the district and really totally in, in, in kind of envel enveloped in that science of reading. Uh, their commitment has been uh, exceptional and noticed by many. Uh, they also talk about results and the results that they've seen in their district and how that continues to build capacity for those folks that are that, that are working with them. One thing I hope that you you those joining us today, you may have heard from these folks when you listen to Susan uh, Lambert interview them. And we're going to share some other things today. So I'm really excited if you have heard them already or if you haven't, because the things you're going to hear today, we're going to add to that conversation. And there, you're going to learn even more about these wonderful ladies. So, so without further ado, let's turn it over. We're going to ask each panelist to just give a brief introduction about where you've been in your career as an educator and where you are currently at today. Uh, just a quick overview or kind of introduction to 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 that uh, to to who to what you do in your district as well. So we'll start with Anila. So um, I presently I'm an intervention teacher and I also coach uh, my teachers at my school. Um, I started out as a classroom teacher. That was about 22 years ago. And along the way, I've had um, a lot of experience in terms of just growing my knowledge to better my, um, my work with my students and the teachers. I've actually been at one school, and so I've grown from the school in my literacy endeavors. I've been in the classroom and then out of the classroom in the capacity of intervention and um, a coach. So I operate pretty much at my school. And uh, I think that I love being at my school because that's where I can make a lot of impact in, uh, you know, with my educators and the students. Thank you so much. And now we'll hear from Kathy. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I have been an administrator for about 24 years. Um, I had most of my experience in an urban district, um, just recently coming to Austin Town for about the past three years. Um, it's kind of a cool fact that this is where I went to school and my children went to school. So I really kind of feel like I'm coming home. Um, and I'm super invested in what we're doing here because it directly impacts the community that I'm living in and it's just exciting to be here. 
Um, when I came to Austin Town, um, probably like many of you, um, we did not have a firm reading curriculum. Um, so it was exciting to lead the building on this journey. And when we get into that discussion of our, our strengths and our weaknesses and our successes and mistakes, um, I hope I can pass on some good information that we've experienced. Yeah, you know what, everyone's searching to hear the wisdom, right? Like give, share your wisdom with us. Um, and that's what today is, is about for sure. And we'll go ahead and hear from Allie. Hi everyone, I'm Allie Rice and I'm with Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools. Um, this is my second year in the role of a district elementary ELA lead. Um, I support all 28 of our elementary schools with all things reading and writing, as well as two alternative sites that serve elementary age students. Prior to this, um, I did reading intervention at the elementary level um, and was a classroom teacher in my district at New Stanley Elementary. And I've worked with kindergarten through fourth grade as a classroom teacher. So I'm excited to be here today a wide range of experiences. And I love this diverse group and just hearing about the different uh, you know, experiences that you all have. And we'll finish with Brittany and then we're really gonna move into hearing about everyone's SOR journey. Um, so Brittany, if you wanna introduce yourself, we'll jump into that after. Yeah, absolutely. Um, welcome everyone. I am Brittany Bills. I coordinate our district K-5 ELA curriculum in Grand Island Public Schools, and I also serve as our district PK-12 multi-tiered system of supports um, as an academic coordinator. Um, in my role this year too, I have um, added support of reading interventionists, so that has been um, a new adventure for me that I've really appreciated and loved. Uh, prior to working at Grand Island Public Schools, I actually served as a school psychologist for um, six years. Five of those were spent in Green Hills Area Education Agency in Iowa, um, where I supported a school district in evaluating their universal tier and um, targeted intensive tiers in reading, um, making improvements at that district. Um, and then prior to that, I was actually at Heartland Area Education Agency for a year as well. So um, have a wealth of experience and knowledge and I'm excited to talk with all of you today. Beautiful. And, you know, Karen, we go around and we've talked about how wonderful it is to see that just these uh, such powerful, you know, uh, or impactful experiences that each educator on this call has, has brought to their district in some way, shape or form. But obviously, all to varying degrees being in the roles that you're in. Um, and, you know, we hear about the experience you all have, right? So we hear, you know, 25, 30 years or, you know, whether you're 10, 15 years in. But the one thing we all share in common here on this call is that we've all began our science of reading journey, um, probably with some of the same beginnings, but they also vary too, right? In that we all want what's best for kids. We've had this exposure. And like, once you start the exposure to the science of reading research, like you can't turn away from it, right? And I'm sure you'd all agree with that. Um, and so Karen, who, who do you wanna, who do you wanna talk to about to kick us off with their science of reading journey? Journey. Well, you know what, I think if it's okay, Kathy, you know, you, you said that one of the things that, that stood out for me when I heard your, about your journey was the route you took was a little different than maybe in the past. And so because you've been on the journey for a while and you've got a little bit of a different route, maybe you can talk about how that kind of transpired in a different way for you and, and why that may have made a big difference. For sure. Um, and you know, you, you know, you should be in education when you're still excited to learn as a leader or as a teacher. And I'm certainly very excited to continue that journey and, and to watch our teachers and students grow as well. Um, we were very different in Austin town in the fact that um, our teachers were very proactive in um, having a say in the learning of the science of reading. Um, we chose the letters program, um, which is a pretty intense um, program for me because uh, I had been out of the classroom for a while. Um, it's almost like attending college courses with the modules and the tests. And um, we also coupled it with some face-to-face -face trainings here in school. But for us to actually take the time to um, learn first 
and then purchase a program or implement um, was, I think, a huge, huge advantage for our teachers um, because that learning um, and then applying was so valuable. You know, I've been in many or I've been in another district that um, a lot of things were thrown at teachers, programs. Um, we were quick to do changes. And, you know, teachers never had that time to buy into anything or to actually do that independent learning. Um, doing that the opposite way has been key here in Austin Town um, because we had that knowledge to be able to pick a program and we had that knowledge to be able to start to apply it in our classroom. Um, and I think it's made the biggest difference for us. Well, thank you. And that really, I mean, lends to, I think everyone on the call that if I recall correctly, listening to the podcast, the, the term letters comes up for everyone. And so I think, you know, maybe shifting to Brittany, because I know Brittany is a letters trainer. Um, I'd like to hear kind of that connection with you as well. Yeah, thank you, Karen. So we had a similar approach. Um, so I shared that I'm in my fourth year in Grand Island Public Schools and my very first year here, um, I really just kind of wanted to get a picture of the landscape of our district and really just kind of understand where we stood um, in regard to um, knowledge based around the science of teaching, reading, and then the materials we were using and, and things like that. I was not familiar with any of that when I, I came here. and. Um, spent a lot of time in classrooms, spent a lot of time um, talking to teachers and working with our coaches and quickly uh, learned that there was a lot of learning to be done. And so I um, uh, convinced my supervisor at the time to let me like speed through the letters professional development. I think I completed it in three weeks um, so that I could um, get to Dallas and do the facilitator training so that I could facilitate the training for our coaches. Um, I really felt like our co we really respect our coaches in our district. They're highly knowledgeable. Um, and so we really wanted to get a picture from them and their experience, you know, is this something that we need to prioritize for our teachers um, and create a professional learning plan around? And our coaches overwhelmingly just a few weeks into the professional development were like, absolutely, yes, we have not learned any of these things. We knew nothing about um, what, you know, letters is telling us. I had two coaches that were teaching college classes at the time and just their minds were completely blown. And so um, we, and similar to Kathy's um, story, we're a larger district. So we have 14 elementary schools. Um, we did put forth a four-year professional learning plan to roll out letters professional development to all of our teachers, kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, and we are expanding that. I'm really proud to say that we're expanding it to our middle school teachers. And then we're also adding um, letters early childhood for our preschool program. Um, but I, I echo um, what Kathy shared. You know, we, our implementation journey was um, slow as well. Um, we actually started just with the foundational skills piece because I was in a position where our district was actually very early into ad an adoption already. Like we had just conducted an adoption like three years prior. And um, so I really needed to work to establish the need um, for us to do something different. And um, having our teachers go through that letters professional development coupled with really high quality instructional materials that were reinforcing what they were learning um, and where they didn't have to pull from all of these places to supplement and fill gaps and fill needs was a really powerful experience for us and I think really set our path forward in a, in a positive way and I'm not confident that it would have gone that way if we hadn't had that approach. Yeah. Okay. First of all, Brittany, three weeks letters trained, like that's so impressive um, alone. Uh, I was like, like jaw drop when you said that I did not know that about you. Um, but it, it really, it kind of, as I was listening to you, it helped me, uh, help, or, it, you know, what I was thinking about is what Ali, what I know about Ali's district. And I remember walking into Kansas city public schools, uh, a couple years ago, a few years ago, and uh, they had just had like a K-3 adoption of a totally different program. Um, and now, uh, you know, fast forward, 
Um, Ali, and Ali, I totally want you to share your science of reading story, but you step back into the district. And not only have you led a science of reading, like, or, you know, led a core adoption with, you know, a program that's really aligned with the science of reading. And that, that process was a very solid, well thought out process for, for you as, as the leader of that. But also now all of your teachers um, and your leaders in your district and your administrators, that is so important. They're all going to be going through letters training. So I'd love for you to share that story with everyone. Yeah, we have... Uh quite the luxury letters training package happening in KCK. Um, I've got 800 staff members enrolled in letters training right now. Um, we have finished unit one, we're on to unit two, um, taking a slower paced approach, um, but we're building it into our early release Wednesdays, which means all of our teachers get to go through the training on contract. So everyone early childhood through fifth grade, special education teachers, ESL teachers, instructional coaches, building administrators, district administrators, got them on board too. Um, I, I'm really happy to report that we've got currently like 725 out of 800 exactly on the pacing that they're supposed to be. I don't, I don't know how that's happening um, in a district as big as ours, but I'm, I'm super pumped about it. Um, we are lucky that the state of Kansas is, pay, is offered to pay for early childhood through third grade teachers and then using ESSER funds to pick up the tab for the rest of the elementary staff in my district. Because um, we were previously balanced literacy, like tried and true guided reading, um, writer's workshop, Matt Glover type stuff happening. And that's, that's the training that I got for our Wednesday PD. When I was a teacher, um, I never felt super effective as a reading teacher, um, would ask questions, never really got answers that um, felt like they were true answers, right? Like very, I would ask very specific questions and get kind of like vague general answers. And so um, I got married, got pregnant, prompted me to move to a district closer to home. Um, started learning about the science of reading, applying it there, learning from a way that a different district did business and always kind of had this giant hole in my heart though for KCK, right? And then this job opened, like the, like the stars all aligned magically. And like, I wasn't sure if they would welcome me because I was coming with different information than what I knew the district had been experiencing. Um, and so I'm, I'm really happy that I have the job that I have at the very moment that I have it, because as with the support of the state combined with myself and having a new director who also understands the science of reading, we're making really, really big moves. Um, we're finally getting partnership with our wonderful state's MTSS reading team who are amazing supports, getting letters rolling for everyone. Um, and a new, a new adoption because our, our previous resource wasn't working for our kids. That's an amazing story, Allie. I mean, I, I, I keep coming back to the 800 teachers that you're getting trained. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's amazing. And, and, and you kind of feeling like that, that lone wolf out there in the start, you know, when you're starting that and, and the confidence that we have and what we're trained in early, that makes a big difference. And so getting all of your teachers on board, I think, and that leads into what, you know, um, Anila shared in her, her conversation with Susan and myself um, about having letters training, but kind of feeling like a lone wolf. And now, and she's in a very large school district as well, Los Angeles Unified School District. So Anila, we'd love to hear how letters made an impact on you as well as, you know, what's happening um, on your science of reading journey and how that may be impacting your district as well. Well, you're muted, Anila. Gotta love technology. So um, uh, just to take apart what you're saying in different um, levels, my personal um, uh, reading journey is kind of different from where the district is going now. Uh, we are fortunate that the district is actually making a big move towards bringing in letters 
for everybody. We are also offered a lot of trainings with the Orton Gillingham method. Uh, we, our district has also been uh, trying a lot of small, um, uh, small learning academies under the banner of MTSS. But um, initially for me at my school, my journey started off kind of um, not really knowing what I was doing as a teacher and turning uh, in terms of teaching reading. I started off by uh, using a, a program which was based on the whole language approach. Um, I came in as a brand new teacher, not really knowing. I was assuming I'm going to read to the kids, the kids will read and the reading is going to happen. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, I personally was very um, inquisitive and wanted to know more. So I did have my own journey of trying to learn how to read. And fortunately, it coincided with the reading program that our district adopted. Um, we went towards learning a lot about, uh, you know, the fundamentals of reading. But then we had another twist and we went more towards balanced literacy. The program wasn't quite working for us. Our teachers were not happy. Then I was in a, in a uh, micro-credential program last year, which really opened my eyes to the um, science of reading. And I was able to bring that to my school and convince my teachers, my principal, to go in for a, a high quality reading program. Over the summer, we did a lot of research. Um, we looked at the program, we attended introductory sessions, and then I'm really happy to say that now we are implementing this program. We are in the midst of implementing and lots of learning. And as a coach, I'm really excited. I get to spend a lot of time with teachers and kind of uncover the, the basis of the program to to bring out the science of reading basis, because a lot of my teachers are still in the process of learning and discovering. Um, so I am really excited that I get to be that person to, uh, to convince them, look, this is a program that's gonna work. And as I was doing my micro-credential myself, I used a lot of those strategies with the students I was working on Zoom and I was really, really surprised and so touched and excited to see the results. And I've never seen those results before. So, um, you know, it didn't start the best, but I think we are on a really great place right now. Yeah, that is so exciting that you are in this place in your school and you're saying, hey, look, we have this core program and now we can really put the science of reading into action, right? Absolutely. Because I'm sure everyone on this call could agree. And, and if, if I'm wrong, please interrupt me, but we can build capacity, which is absolutely a must at this place in time that we're in. And the beautiful uh, thing about that is that we have resources. We have research that's accessible, right? Like this is a whole movement. It feels wonderful to be part of like this call to action, but we can learn about that resource. But the reality of it is, is if teachers don't have like high quality instructional materials to put that into action, that research into action, then we know that typically we're going to go back to the things that we feel comfortable about. So Anila, I love what you shared about like, we're actually kind of doing ha things hand in hand, right? right. And, and I, I think most of us on the call probably have had that experience as well, right? Like, yes, we've done some learning beforehand, but that learning is ongoing. And when we have a, a, a program or we're implementing materials, high quality instructional materials that are really bringing that research to life, then we can really value and become invested into why those pieces of that program are so uh, critical and important to every single child. But, you know, we can talk about the instant successes, right? Like, like you said, I've never seen reading scores like this, right? And everyone on the call will probably say the same thing. Like we've had this great data um, and, and data is what proves to us that something is effective. But I will say that the majority of people on this call, and, and I want to hear about those successes. Um, but what I do want to hear about is the things that we come up against to get to experience those successes. 
right? So maybe we're in that process of learning about the science of reading and we have a lot of pushback because teaching reading is like a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so we really have like that, um, that grieving process when we start learning that, oh, wow, I maybe I'm going to have to make some shifts. Does this mean mm -hmm. that I've done it wrong? Um, and what does this say, right? And so I'd love to hear about some of the challenges or maybe you have one story that really sticks out in your head about, um, you know, about some of those challenges. And so we can learn from one another's failures. So I know that this was really something that was important to Kathy as she spoke yesterday. She said, you know, we have to be, I, I just want to share all the things that like I came up against and I'm sure we could all share those. So I want to share that wisdom with our participants, if that's okay. For sure. You know, I think we brought up so many good points. I mean, your district has to make this a priority. Um, and I was very lucky. And, you know, I hear the ladies' stories. You know, the curriculum director here was very vested in making the change. And it was the data that dictated the change. Um, I'm only a K2 building, so I don't have those state scores, but I know I'm directly um, impacting the third, fourth, and fifth grade scores. So, um, it was important to us as a district to make it a priority in this K-2 building. Um, and you're so right. When I got here, you know, people were in love with the way they had taught before. You know, they had learned um, a lot of great things. And it's really hard to come in and say, OK, let's unlearn all that. You know, that's not exactly, you know, what we're learning right now in research to be, you know, the way to go. So um, you do have to move slowly. And I think that, again, goes back to the importance of learning first. Um, we soon found out within a year of letters, like, hey, we don't have any of these resources. Like, we've got nothing. Um, and I don't even know if my curriculum director had the intentions of purchasing a curriculum or a, a program. And we had to. I mean, we, we were so invested by that point. Like, that was huge for us as well. We can't expect our teachers to do all these learning, this learning if we're not willing to go to the next step and support them with the resources and materials that they need. So, you know, I guess one message out there is like, this is a, a commitment 100% because like once you go into your learning, you're gonna learn real quickly. You're not necessarily armed with what you need um, to put the science of, uh, science of reading out there. So um, that's just a, a caution <laughs> for everybody who's thinking about making that change. Um, for us being our first year in a new program and with new assessments and new tutoring going on, new um, types of programs, like I, I have to really take a look at my building schedule. Um, again, in the K-2 world, your specialists, your art, music, gym, technology, you know, that drives a lot of your daily instruction. Um, and again, not knowing um, when I created the special schedule in the um, summer, you know, wow, I had an Eye opener this year with what I need to do moving forward um, because you want to make sure that you're giving those teachers the time to teach and that that intervention time is built into their daily schedule. So um, you're definitely learning as you're going. And as I did say to the ladies yesterday, I mean, it's those mistakes and that reflection is what's going to make us, you know, better every year. So and we're just at the beginning stages as well. Well, and I'd like to add to that, Kathy. I mean, when you talk about learning and the mistakes and, and you know, I know that Brittany, you shared something in one of the calls about the grieving process and, and teachers learning about those, those things that they may have um, had in place that they may look back and think, I, I wish I would have done something differently. So I'd love to hear you share a little bit about that, you know, giving grace and, and that grieving process. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say that the, you know, having our teachers go through the letters professional development, um, I was, I was grateful for the relationship that I had with teachers because they felt comfortable enough to share, you know, how they genuinely felt with me, you know, like, um, that the, the, they just, they felt, I don't know, just they, they wish they could go back in time and do it again. You know what I mean? With the knowledge that they now had. Um, and, you know, we, 
our, our motto has been no better, do better, right? And we're gonna continue to know better and we're gonna continue to do better. And I think, um, you know, Kathy talked about the learning process, right? And, and I think this is another really important consideration is that the science is ever evolving and it's ever growing. And we're learning more and more all the time. And so, you know, it's, and, and we, I think we inherently know this in education, but the work is never really done, right? Um, we're, we're gonna, that science is gonna continue to evolve and we're gonna have to continue to grow and shift with it um, and make adjustments with it. And so um, I, I think one of the things that has been really, really critical, because we are, we are in our second year now of implementing um, the foundational piece of the program that we are using. Um, and we're in our first year um, with um, knowledge strand in K2 and then the integrated in 3.5. And one of the pieces that's been really critical with our K1-2 teachers, you know, they've, they've been through letters training for a while now, but bringing that back and bringing those reminders back, you know, and, and continuing to make those connections and making sure we do a good job of adequately supporting our new staff. I mean, all of those things are considerations that you have to make, especially when you're in a position like mine, um, because you they can't, teachers can't take it all in, you know, the first time around. And, and there's always something, there's always like an aha or a connection that gets made, you know, and so, um, just continuing to reinforce um, the connections between the high quality instructional materials and what we know from the research and the science. Um, that's something that I've really worked hard to do in our professional learning with our teachers. Um, and then I think um, the other thing I would share just kind of reflecting on, on Kathy's um, comments were, you know, when I started this was the first time I've ever been in a position like this. This is the first time I've ever led a curriculum adoption. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I just, you know, it was, I was building the plane while we were flying it. Um, and now that we've been in it for um, a while, you know, one of the things that I love about teachers, but it's also kind of a fault of ours is that we want to do everything perfect right away. And the reality is, is that is not sustainable um, and that's not possible, right? And so um, one of the things that I've really been thinking about as the district leader um, for our literacy movement is, you know, what are we gonna give ourselves that grace to focus on and get really, really good at before we move on to the next thing and, and really kind of lay out that plan for um, our teachers moving and our, our principals moving forward um, is something that I have really been thinking about. So that would be my my piece to add. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Brittany, I'm sorry, just to jump in. I mean, that grace is huge because, you know, teachers don't come to school to not want to teach reading. You know, they do. They want to do what's very best for their students. And they have, um, you know, very ingrained philosophies and, and learnings that they have. So it's a big switch when you're saying, hey, let's look at this now. This is, you know, research base, it's going to be totally different than what you may have ever done before. You're going to love it. I mean, that's not always the, the reception you get back. So, you know, we are making mistakes, you know, and you have to accept those mistakes and, and know that it is ever changing. I mean, I think that's excellent. Yeah. And uh, just to piggyback on what you guys are saying at the level at which I am working, I think that, um, getting a curriculum in the hands is just the very first step. It's the, it's the just-in-time support that the teachers need. They need that reinforcement that, that it's okay not to get it right the first time. And that, you know, there is support and there's, there's collegiality and conversations. And the leadership, of course, uh, has to accept that there's the technical part of it and there's that emotional part of getting it under their belt. So it does need time and certainly it needs a lot of encouragement and support uh, on everybody's part. A mistake is just part of that learning process. 
I feel really lucky that I was a teacher in my district. So I went through all of the trainings that they went through. I taught the same way that they taught. I had Flippy Dolphin and Eagle Eye posters up on my classroom wall. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, I mean, I, I always want to give teachers grace, but at the same, I, I've got a unique position to sit there and say, look, I know you're teaching your butt off every day because I was every single day in there teaching my heart out, doing lesson plans at night and on the weekend. And I wasn't getting results and our classrooms are not getting results, right? Like 30% of our kids reading on grade level isn't going to cut it. And so I think from my standpoint at a very large urban district, some of it, um, yes, is understanding their, their grief, but also reigniting their urgency because you get used when you've been in your classroom, teaching your heart out, teaching your butt off every day and only getting 30%. And it's been that way for 10 years. You start to accept that as your reality. And you have to find that new teacher. Like even, even in a 30 year veteran, you you have to right. get back into the heart of why are you here? Like you're here to make a difference. You're here because you love kids. You have all of the evidence in front of you that what we've been doing as a district hasn't been working for kids and giving them permission um, to not blame themselves, right? Like it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault. You can have that grief about it, but then we've got to we've got to spark that urgency. Um, I think Pamela Snow and in a, one of her recent blog posts did a really good job of summarizing kind of the process that a district can go through. Like I connected with her recent blog posts a lot from a district perspective. Um, I will put a link to her blog in the chat for anyone who's interested. And she does kind of go through like step by step by step how things feel and kind of what happens. And I, I think it's definitely relatable for, for anyone who's interested. What you just shared is, is so true. Like there's a, a balance between giving teachers the probably largest group of perfectionists in the world, um, the grace to, to make that shift, but also reigniting that fire, right? So like, I always think of it like this, we step out of college into a reading program. And we become that reading teacher, right? And so when that reading program, when we're taking that away or moving to a different program, it's like, who are we as reading teachers, right? Like, wh who am I? It's like the, the crisis, the identity crisis of who am I as a reading teacher? I don't know how to teach reading any other way. And so the beautiful moment about this time, and I think that's kind of creating that change management, that positive climate or culture of this is an exciting time. Like we have research that is, yes, some of it is bullseye science. Like there's no more negotiating. And we were just at plain talk and Karen, you know, the, the neuroscientist name, I can never think of his name. Um, but he put that so directly, right? Like this is exactly like there's, there's, it's not, these are things that are not up for negotiation, especially when it comes to word recognition. However, um, you know, obviously there are some things that are going to evolve and we're going to learn more about, and we're going to continue to know more and do better with each passing day. Um, and so I love that you said like, it is, there is that, Hey, we have to re reignite the fire that we all had that passion that we had coming out of college. Right. And I, I've seen that and experienced that as a classroom teacher, but also with other districts nationally that we work with as well. And it is so exciting. But in order to get there, sometimes there are some roadblocks, right? One of the most, and I'm going to throw this question out there because we have seen districts like yourselves go through this phenomenal process piloting or, you know, learning about the science of reading, then putting the materials in districts hands. And, and then all of a sudden we're here and it's, we, we are moving forward with our program and maybe there's some controversy, right? Maybe it's that we're exposing students to rich worldly background knowledge that we've never exposed them to before in our previous years as those reading teachers that we once were. And so I know, Brittany, you shared such your your district has such a strong like uh, I, I want you to share kind of what your policy is for that. 
and how that has played out and really helped Grand Island make forward progress with, with those, those, what can be controversial to some may not be controversial to other topics. Yeah, sure. Um, so I I feel really um, fortunate that we have some really nice policy in our board policy in our district um, that aligns really well with the shift that we're making um, in teaching reading. And I sh I should say, you know, we we really emphasized developing our K one two teachers. Um, and when we moved um, to you know the knowledge strand and then the integrated strand. Um, in CKLA, like we had not spent the time developing um, our teachers around that part of the science of teaching reading yet. Like we had really emphasized the foundations of reading, uh, much like others um, have shared on this call. And so, you know, we we probably didn't spend the time there that I would have liked, you know, to really lay that foundation and, and set the groundwork. Um, and so, um, yeah, so our, our policy has been helpful in that, you know, um, some of the the units that we teach um like for example they'll teach about religion within the cult within the context of civilizations that students are learning about um and we have a really beautiful board policy around um, religion in our curriculum um and its place and um it it complements um the introductions to our teacher guides really well and it's um it's the two together are really powerful communication pieces um, that we can use, you know, really to talk through with parents um, or, you know, if we have teachers who express, you know, discomfort or just um, uncertainty, I would say, I, I think it's more so uncertainty, you know, like they're, they're teaching about concepts that are foreign to them even, you know what I mean? A lot of times, like, I can't tell you how many PLCs I've sat in this year and teachers are like, I'm learning right along with my students. I didn't know any of these things, you know? Um, and so um, because they're learning along with their students, there is like this uneasiness about how it's going to go. You know what I mean? And um, I, I think probably, too, I, I suspect um, an uncertainty about like their level of confidence and being able to facilitate those conversations and and those kinds of things. And so um, so, yeah, our, our policy has been really helpful to us um, in, in supporting those conversations and uh, we're fortunate that, you know, we've we've had really great just PLC conversations with our teachers and really gone to like, let's look at what what the lesson is calling for, right? Like what the lesson is focusing on and what we're asking students to do and um, really like what is this emphasizing? What is it not emphasizing? And um, and so far it, it's been very positive. So I, I feel fortunate for that. But yeah, it definitely these shifts to really knowledge rich curriculums um, or instructional materials um, come with their own set of challenges um, that other programs don't bring to the table for sure. Yeah, and I think it goes back to that change, right? This looks different, it's gonna feel different, but for good reason. Um, I know that I can, it goes back to the perfectionist thing, you know, teachers, I know as a former classroom teacher, I wanted to be the foremost expert on the, what I was teaching about. And when, it, you know, when I was having to become a storyteller about a topic that I had learned decades about, you know, or, you know, about decades before that I didn't remember, that was a shift. And so uh, we see that all the time with teachers. And Ali, did you experience this in your district? The most frequent thing that I've experienced is, um, you know, questions like, well, why do our students need to learn about this? Why, why would our kids need to learn about the Renaissance in fifth grade? This is insane. Why do they need to learn about these things? I don't even know about these things. I didn't hear about these until I was an adult, to which my favorite response is, well, why not? And oftentimes people don't have a, a strong answer for it, right? Like, because really, if you think about the root of that belief system there, why wouldn't, why wouldn't these kids, why wouldn't our kids in, the, in these neighborhoods, in the zip code, deserve to learn about this content as well? Absolutely. Karen just said it. Like, a woman after my own heart. Yes, exactly. Right. Karen, you know, you, you always say this. 
Well, we always have those conversations about why not? Why do why shouldn't every child have that opportunity and have the opportunity to build rich vocabulary around those wonderful topics? And I think we underestimate children's abilities. And I think that's sometimes what we do when we want to be selective with the content. And I've had teachers say to me, and, and I know you probably have too, is uh, my kids aren't going to like that. My kids, that's not something they'll be interested in. And and I always say this, and, and uh, Anila, this may be something where I know you talked to me about the knowledge gap. Natalie Wexer will share about, we don't know what kids will like until we give them the opportunity. Uh, Anila, I, I think you've got something to share on this. Yeah, no, I want to thank Ali for giving me the words because I have the same questions, like why would a child need to know this? But um, I, I think that there's also the fact that once they do it, they do come back and say, oh my gosh, they were really interested. So I think some of it is not having done that kind of work before and not expecting that this will uh, actually work. I think uh, that's one of the factors, but the initial feeling is yes, like Ali said, uh, why would this child need to know this? I didn't know this and I'm okay without you know, knowing that. So I think that um, Brittany was right. We do have to prepare for that. I mean, personally, yes, we've also been focusing on the very foundational piece and just the comprehension, just the ability to listen for that, that long period of time. Um, that listening component is also what we have to recognize and building that background knowledge piece as well. So yes, those are some of the problems in making that shift, definitely. Yeah, you know, it's funny because the other day I heard a, a fifth grade teacher share this. She said, I, it was time for Shakespeare. And um, she said, so I asked my fifth graders to put away their math books because it was time for Shakespeare. And they said, yes. And she thought in that moment, like if I would have only had Shakespeare in that way in fifth grade, in an exciting way, maybe my experience with Shakespeare and comprehending and really unpacking the, the complex text written by Shakespeare, that I, it would have been such a difference for me, right? And I think it goes back to, well, we didn't have this and we're okay, but think about the gift that we are giving kids that's better than what we had in that way. And that is when you can rest your head as an educator every night, knowing that you have brought a world to kids who may never leave the state they live in or the city that they live in. And that is so powerful. And that is equity, right? Like that is mm -hmm. equitable learning for every child, no matter what walk of life uh, they come from. Megan, you just made me think about, um, so I have probably hundreds of stories of teachers that talk about their experience um, this year and how much they have loved, although it has been a challenge and it has been different, like how much they do genuinely love teaching reading now, more so than they ever have in the past, and how excited our kids are about reading and about writing. They love that time of the day, like they don't, they don't want it to end. They're so excited. I had a teacher tell me that they have a, a wall space dedicated in their classroom where they put up, you know, everything related to the unit, like um, they'll put up teacher, you know, student work and all kinds of things. And students noticed that the wall was empty when they came back and they were like, yes, we're going to start a new unit. And they couldn't wait to figure out what their new unit was going to be. And so um, it has been, although it has brought its challenges, it has been a tremendous joy as well. Yeah. And I think that that is a beautiful place for us to really just kind of embrace that. And that's why you're all here, right? Like you are experiencing the work that you have put in to lead your districts, your schools to making that, that, that shift, right? And it is a shift and it's not always the easiest, um, but you ladies have, have done it gracefully, even with the challenges that you've had to overcome. And I love hearing about the policies that we can lean back on. Sometimes we may not even know exist, right? Or maybe we need to make sure we have before we leave that charge or just the training so teachers can make informed decisions instructionally. Um, and, and it's such an honor to be on this call with all of you because you've done that. Now, one thing Karen asked yesterday, and Karen, I love that you brought this up. 
um, yesterday of, uh, is the one thing, right? The one thing, the one resource that can ignite the fire that can really ha give teachers that aha moment. Um, we'd love to hear from each of you. And I know Karen, you might wanna jump in here. Well, and it, I know there's a million things, but I just think everyone, you all have your thing that really kind of stands out to you and we'd love to hear it. And I think starting with our teacher, uh, Anila, um, what you shared with, what, what would be the takeaway for people on the call that you'd say, this is what I want you to go away and look at um, to help you on this journey? Well, yes, uh, for me, um, it's kind of difficult because there were so many things that came and the more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. So just to narrow down, I'll say, um, uh, you know, I, I really started by reading uh, Natalie uh, Waxler's book that really opened up my, um, my understanding of many things. And if I can put in a word, I also love to read the articles by Emily Hanford that that also explained a lot of things. And there's some more, but I'll restrict myself to those right now. Yes. Uh, and Kathy, if you wanna jump in. Sure, I, I think empowering your teachers and your administrators to the learning first is huge. Um, you know, we, we are all big proponents of letters. You know, I don't know if that would be the way that your district went, but the empowerment of that knowledge is just the way to go. Um, and then the rest of the pieces fall in. Um, and, you know, whether you choose to start small or, or large, um, I think those changes come much easier when they have that learning done first. And Allie, how about you? Um, I always, I always go back to the dots, like Megan mentioned earlier, like, even if you feel completely alone, um, finding your people, even inside your district, outside your district, finding anybody who can offer that support has been huge for me. Like I started with two first grade teachers at one school who were willing to try something different for a few months and let me come in and work with them and get some data out of their classrooms. And then that became a grade level at another school. And then it became that entire school. And then that became a whole nother school, right? Like, so you really can start with just one or two classrooms. Um, anybody who's willing to try and every district has some, some, some crazy teacher out there who's willing to do anything and go above and beyond and partner with you. Well, and how wonderfully that leads into 800 teachers, right? And it does. Yeah, so, we're up to 800 now. <laughs> that's right. And so and ending this conversation about the resources, Brittany has a free resource. And I think everyone wants to know the free resources that are available to, to folks. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I we all shared about having letters. And I recognize that not every district is in a position where they can afford to offer that to their teachers. And so um, a, a couple of resources that we actually even pulled as part of our um, kind of process around creating a sense of urgency, which is what Ali talked about, like kind of reigniting that urgency. Um, it, Educational Advisory Board or EAB, um, they have a report on narrowing the third grade reading gap that is excellent. Um, and they also have a science of reading implementation guide that is phenomenal as well. Um, so I would encourage people to check those out. Yeah, and you all have shared, I mean, phenomenal resources. Um, I think that this has been a wonderful conversation. It's been fun. Uh, we want, want to continue this conversation, though. We've heard a lot about transferring that knowledge, building capacity, what that looks like, uh, and, and, and how that really impacts our instructional decisions. We're going to continue this conversation with educators who have really made that shift uh, with using CKLA's core program on 
or Amplify's core program, which is uh, CKLA, Core Knowledge Language Arts. We're going to continue that this Thursday. Uh, so we'd love to see you there. And we'll also continue this, um, the science of reading journey, um, because it is for everyone. And, and we'd love to uh, see some of you on those calls. And so as we do close this out, I don't see any questions that were put in the chat, which means that you ladies did a lovely job at just sharing um, your process and um, and 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 uh, your experiences in a way that I'm sure many of the people on this call were able to uh, really relate to. Um, so thank you again, and thank you to all of our participants. We will stay on for. Uh, a minute or two if we do have any questions. But again, congratulations to all of our uh, award winners. And thank you so much for being here. You all are change leaders and that we know that's what it takes. And you are those people. So thank you. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us today and all of our attendees. What a wonderful, this, this made my week, okay? Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Likewise, thank you all and have a great remainder of the week. All right, well, if we don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and sign off. Enjoy the rest of your, your afternoon, everyone. Think spring. Yes, bye everyone. <laughs>